Great. Live. All right. So, yeah, I'm trying. I was sitting here as I was trying to do all this. Uh, remember when we did the first initial show? It was like midwinter, right? Something yeah, like that? it something yeah. like midwinter. We yeah. had anything up to some structure. I think it was January. Yeah. When you were in here last time. Okay. Yeah. And so, so we had just gotten the space cleared out. Yeah. There was no bar or anything in here at that time, right? Uh, there were there was a structure. Just the steel work. Yeah. The steel work was okay. It still had like the back framing holding it. Yeah, and uh, what we like, and so like we were, and maybe you guys probably figured it out, but so since then we were just a segment that time you guys are on right. there, yeah. three three to go, and now it did so well that we were just like, hey, we should do a hop at the bean show of its own, and so uh, that's what this is now and so we're in episode five and so you guys could basically had a a hand in the conception of the hop and the beans initial show so you're welcome so thank you <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and yeah it's we do like different breweries brew pubs and then uh also specialty coffee so i was at Akron coffee roasters yesterday talking to them they're at a latte art throw down there also for one of our initial shows which i had no idea what that was but figured out very soon like it was just like on the fly it was pretty cool um and then but the heart of the show is like going to places like this and interviewing people we'll do events like we have a booth at Akron Ale Fest um in August August 4th and I haven't figured out how we're going to do that exactly but mostly what we'll do is like have interviews and go to different uh, breweries and different coffee shops and kind of just get their stories because it's all every place is a different it's story what, right it's happening yeah right? and so it's it i mean we're never going to run out of content it's just uh keep capturing these people's stories in the communities and their their vision of like okay craft beer is the umbrella but how are you doing it you know um and so yeah it's proven to be super fun and engaging so far so um, so yes, let's let's do a show. Let's, let's start us off. So um, yeah, the last time that we sat down with you guys, it was with Compass Coffee, who I have also done a show with. Um, they did a show recently. Uh, or they had an event called Drink Beer Do Good, and it was a beer tasting in Compass Coffee. So I was like, that's a perfect event. Um, but so yeah, segment on three three to go. We've launched our own show, still associated associated with three three to go, three three zero to go, and uh, we've been with all different coffee shops and uh, breweries and brew pubs, and we've been taking our, our time to you know meet with each one separately. But eventually, we'd love to get back to our roots and have um, specific shows with coffee and beer. Yeah. So um, in addition to tracking your progress and and what this. Uh, who Missing Falls is and how you guys are establishing a new brew pub. We have Alex Petz joining us, um, who has, I think, a unique perspective as you, you travel to a lot of these new brew pubs, right, and install um, some tap systems, mm -hmm. and you have also been a certified beer tasting judge, correct? Correct, uh, although not currently. Okay, it's, yeah. It's, I let it go, but it, yeah. it's, it's a fun thing I did once. Nice. <laughs> cool, so I think... Uh, I thought that'd be a cool addition to you, like as a startup yeah. brewery, and then as you were actually doing work here today. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah. So, and then Missing Falls to my right uh, is joining us. Two of their um, standout gentlemen of their team uh, here to talk with us about who and what Missing Falls is. And so, um, yeah, let's just jump right into it. So. Uh, Missing Falls, you guys have been super busy. Uh, we've been busy, like I was talking about becoming a show, but I think you guys have us beat a little bit probably by you know all the progress that you've been making and launching. And so, um, do you have a timeline for you know your opening and um, a little bit? Tell us a little bit, like like we were talking about your construction progress and just stuff like that. Like where's where are you guys at? We're probably at about an 80 to 85 percent completion on everything. Um, with with all the luck in the world, we're shooting for, to be open to the public mid to late September. That's what we're hoping for. Okay. Uh, but along with that, I, we can't make any promises because we've had a handful of setbacks, deliveries not showing up, mm -hmm. you know, contractors delays. It's just it's just how life works. Sure, sure. Yeah. So mid to late September, are you saying? Yeah, that's what we're looking for to be okay. open to the public. Uh, we're hoping to be brewing. With much luck, by the end of this month, okay, nice. Start brewing, trying to get 
get the beer in the fermenters and yeah. let, it, let it work itself out and get it down to the kegs. Okay, all right. Um, so, so back us, let's, let's back up the whole thing a little bit maybe. So people that maybe haven't seen the first episode, um, tell us a little bit about who Missing Falls is, kind of uh, tell us your story, I guess, basically how you got to this point to becoming, a, launching a brew pub. Well, I don't know, Sean, you started as a home brewer. I did, yeah. You know, I started. We all started as home brewers. Yeah. Um, most of us have been doing it for, you know, at least five to ten years, you know, average between all of us, even longer. Me and Mark have been doing it for probably about 15 years altogether. Uh, well, each, yeah. I should say. So yeah. we've been doing it on and off for a long time. We all started on the stovetop and, you know, just kind of expanded from there. Um, and that's kind of what brought us all together eventually. Yeah, we all ended up being friends and we knew each other. We all made beer and we're like, well, let's just start making beer together. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, it turned into a weekend hobby. Like every weekend we were making beer and the systems just kept getting bigger. The beers kept getting bigger. And we just the I recipes mean, got more crazy as time went on. <laughs> sure. And we learned to dial that back a little bit because some of them get some, out of hand. But. Some some yeah. went a bit overboard, and they, they ended up down the driveway because they weren't even consumable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's it, it worked out great. We we all have you know great friends with each other. We all have the same common interest. Uh, we're all hard working at it. We all learned each other's jobs doing it. So it was at the point where we didn't even really have to tell each other what to do. We just knew what to do while we were brewing. Yeah. And we just put on some music. And, you know, most people sleep in on Saturday, 6.30 in the morning. We're filling up the water, getting ready to heat it up and start Blasting brewing. Pantera and Metallica and <laughs> Slipknot as we're doing it, right? Yeah. It's your uh, music to brew by. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. All right. Kind of like... Uh, Willy Wonka is a world of brewing. You guys just get, everybody knows what to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I got good after a while where, you know, even if one or two of us would show up late, you know, the rest of us could be able to handle the system on our own. And, you know, that's kind of what we want to do with this is everybody's going to know each every step so that, you know, there will never be any. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, so that's a great point, though. That's something that, like, as you developed it from home brewing, you carry it on to in the brewery. So as a brewery, that's like you'll you'll have that you'll establish right. roles. Yeah. Well, we each have our strengths and yeah. you know, but that's what we want to do is everybody will know every step of the process. But we'll have a whole new level of oh, we'll have a whole new level of stuff going on with now serving people and kitchen and food on top of everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we have a quick uh, technical difficulty. Phone die. Just try to like the the plug and miss like it. Is it what? Okay. All right. Well, quick. Just stick with us. So, so tell us. No, keep t tell us the story. Missing Missing Falls, right? Um, and it, it's like I think quickly you could like I've realized in in any business if you don't have the passion to do what you want to do. Um, it's like just infinite money, and it quickly becomes evident. And what I noticed about you guys, and I love about you guys, is like you are passionate about creating phenomenal beer, right? Right. That, that definitely has to be there because we've had probably about ten thousand reasons to quit trying to open up this business. The difficulties we had, the setbacks, the figuring out how to write a business plan on your own. Right. We lost the host. We lost what? We lost our host. <laughs> oh no. All right, well, let's talk sports. <laughs> <laughs> Indians put up 18 runs yesterday. Oh, man. <clears throat> that was a beating. I ain't seen one of those since my brother swore at my mom no. back in 74. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Lee. Dead space. Right. So what do you think we should start, you know, coming up with uh, next? So we've, done, we've done the high powerfuls. We've, we've got the IPAs, which I think IPAs, look, I love them, you love them, but the, the market's flooded. I, mean, uh, I think there's always room for more, more high-power IPAs. More. I, I think that's what a lot of people have dialed back on are the IPAs, and they're not I want to see the porter anymore. come back. I want to see the, the we porter bring come some back, porters, the We could do some more well-rounded stouts that I think a lot of people are missing the mark on. Yeah. Um, it, you know, we could, that could be pushed a little harder. I really want someone in our area to make a glitter beer. Glitter beer? Glitter. I've been hearing about that. Uh, never. So I will not put glitter in my beer. No, I've been trying to push Jay Graham at just buy a snow. I have seen one, but so Jay, if you're watching, you uh, buy a snow. Jay, don't. Jay, 
<laughs> yeah, Jay, don't, don't, do don't, don't do it, Jay. Glitter swirl. And you know yes. people order it just because you're like, exactly. you That's would be nice pooping glitter for a week. <laughs> it could be so right. tongue-in-cheek. Those of a, right, right, yeah. yeah, yeah but those yeah, of yeah. us that are old enough remember Goldschlager. Yeah. What was the sell on that? Yeah. And what happened? You would poop gold. No, it, it did, did no good. No good for you or anything else. No. Um, so it kind of transitioned a little bit. Maybe Alex, so. Yes. Like I, what we were talking a little bit about at the beginning, tell us a little bit about what it is that, that you do on the end with the TAP system and why it's so important for all these, because you've been doing it a lot, I've, right? Yeah, um, so I design, install, and maintain draft beer systems. Uh, it probably only, it's been 18 months that I've been doing it on my own. I've been doing it for five or six years now for another company up in Cleveland. Um, but it's just, uh, it's how the, I, I figure out how the, the beer goes from the keg to the faucet, to the glass, all in one piece, exactly how a brewer wants it. Nice. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. the long and short of it. It's yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and there's, I think you were telling me before, if I remember, we met a long time ago okay. at oh, Magic City. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were at Magic City, and uh, you were telling me about, like, why it's important to keep up on that, like, to get your, your lines clean and stuff like that, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, the... So the state mandates that you have to have your lines clean twice a month because it makes sense for the state because clean beer sells more and they want more revenue. But mm -hmm. just uh, sanitation-wise, everything starts to get really funky after two weeks. So that's kind of the perfect number. Yeah. Um, and it it's when you sit down at a bar, you want to drink a beer. Do you want do you want to drink the beer that the brewer released from the brewery? That the brewer said this is our product. This is what we want. So it's kind of it's my job to make sure that that's the experience every customer gets. So yeah. it's got to pour right, uh, and it's got to be clean. So yeah, 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 that's awesome. Um, and so then, in addition to that, as I learned too, like I, we were talking, the you're a, a BJCP yeah. certified uh, beer judge, or used to be at least, yeah. right? What does what does that mean? And how does one so become the, certified? The beer judge certification program. We started by a whole bunch of home brewers, actually in the Cincinnati area. And like, mm. if you read any home home brewing books, uh, Gordon Strong writes a lot of them. He was kind of the impetus of that. It's very similar to the Cicerone, um, whereas the Cicerone is much more focused on the service side, and it has a lot of the same carryover knowledge. BJCP is a lot more brewery intensive, so you have to know what happens to mash at what temperature. You that you have to know how to brew. Yeah. And uh, it's... To properly judged. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a really, it's a pretty grueling process where you have an entry exam, and then from the point that you take your entry exam, you have six months to complete a, a proctor. It was it was about a five-hour sit-down test. Wow. Um, and you have five beers that you have to judge. There's, there's a group of judges judging the same exact beers that you're judging at the same exact time in another room, so they're filling out their sheets and all your your judging sheet is going to get judged by them. Wow. And so it's like the judges of the judge. Yeah. Is. Yeah. And uh, I did really well on, I, I got four out of five. The fifth one was a sour beer to guard and I loved it. And I had scored it, uh, I think I gave it like 50 points and the judges gave it three points because it was sour and that's what I loved about it. So yeah. I thought it was intentional, but there was... Well, I don't mean to jump in, but how do they set those standards then? Yes. Well, they have... Because a lot of beer to me is subjective in what you like, so, right. you know, you really liked that beer, but they're saying it's not as good, so it, did you get points knocked off because they, you didn't agree with them? I don't think so. I think that it's, it's super subjective, but the BJCP, had, they're the ones that hold what's known as the style guidelines. The style, yeah, I guess so. The beer Bible. Um, yeah. And they're the ones that control that. Uh, and so it's like it has to be according to uh, what the, their style guidelines say. And if the brewer doesn't, if it's not labeled or, or if the brewer doesn't say it was intentionally sour, then it probably ought not to be sour. But, it was yeah. but I've heard stories of judges where they'll have the total opposite comments on a lot of those yeah. beers. So yeah. I, I don't know. It's kind of like getting your beer commented on, on, on right. the Right. <laughs> yeah, like online, <laughs> online exactly. comments. Exactly. You'll have some people that love it and some will just tear you yeah. apart. Right. right. Yeah. And, and as like, so as a home brewer, if you ever submit a beer to a competition, that's the same sort of feedback you get is, is these judges' sheets. And you kind of have to have the same attitude when you look at Yelp and wade through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's BS? And especially what's Facebook. What's <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's, I think that's probably it's a cool perspective from like hearing from you guys, brewers, as we talk about like that process and someone that's a judge. And it's like, okay, like, 
you know, what's your, it's, you know, how do you perceive that beer? And then what's the intention, like the intended perception of that beer to be? And it's right. like, okay, then how do you properly judge it? So, and maybe you answered this a little bit, but so like once you get through that process and once you're like going to like, is like beer fests that you like yeah, judge beers so at? Your, your, uh, your, in, your inbox on your, your email just starts exploding with invitations to mm. every beer event. Sounds like an awful job. <laughs> <laughs> I would just turn, turn the computer on. So many beers to taste. <laughs> Sometimes they get, uh, they're a little desperate for judges, so they'll offer accommodation, they'll offer travel stuff, but yeah. I've actually never, they never don't, traveled. They don't pay though, right? No. 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 And it's, I mean, when I was doing it, so when I was finally done with the whole process, I was kind of just done with beer in general at that point in my life, and so I've never actually like judged on a big, at a big event or anything. Really? Else kind of walked away from beer for about eight months after I did all that. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like yeah. OD a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome back. Yeah, yeah, right. No, it's a <laughs> um, so, like, what did you, and then I'm going to get to you guys on the, the, the same answer, but what do you look for when you're, like, tasting? Uh... Uh, the first thing I look for is just quality. It's just, yeah. is, is that first, that sniff and that first sip, is that something that is not going to offend me? Or like, am I gonna like that? And that tells you a lot. And then, can I keep drinking it? It's like this one was probably one of the hardest beers I've ever finished. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It it's like, not. It's not ours, by the way. Not, no, not no. a missing falls beer. No. <laughs> so, but I didn't want to leave it. So. Sure. Yeah. What else? So you taste, kind of like taste appearance. appearance. Um, I mean, I have a lot of a lot of things to say about the hazy IPA craze. Mm -hmm. and, it's nice to know. I just read an article. You and me both. That, uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Sean Hill at uh, Hill Farmstead in Vermont has the same thoughts that I do. So I was like, hey, I'm not alone on this. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, yeah. That's what I, I mean, I look for, you know, when, when I started at, out at Thirsty Dog and, and working under someone like Tim Rastad or where you can't get away with anything and everything always has to, like, the expectation is highest quality always. Sure. And when I see beers that are, like chunky and, and coming out uh, like hazy and frosty is just like that that touches a bone deep inside and it's just like beer needs to be bright and brilliant and the customer needs to know that it's clean and mm. it's that's just i 100 percent agree with that statement too yeah well that leads me to so like what as a brewer i know i've heard you guys tell stories about dumping beer uh if it's not up to your standards what do you look for and a beer that you brew yourselves, and how do you gauge that? Like, ah, I don't, this, this isn't up to our standards. You go first. I, 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 I you look, guys have strong feelings about yeah, that. Yeah, I look for a beer that it's something that I'm going to want to buy more than one of. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's plenty of one and done beers out there, and you know that's not going to entice the public if they're just going to try it and they're not going to remember to come back for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want I want a beer that I want to you know drink and have two or three of that's that good. Mm -hmm. I don't want to taste synthetics in it or like like yeah, Alex said, chunkiness or uh, the, the lack of taking the proper steps to make to make a good beer or to you know a beer that's rushed through the process that's not you know it, it's green it hasn't sat in this, you know second fermentation long enough where the carb level's not right. Or we've all had this happen, you open the bottle and it just volcanoes out of there over and yep. over and over. Cause you know. I remember you bought a six pack once of, of Yeah, I locally. spent a lot of money in a six pack of a local brewer that was around the Ohio area and I opened up every bottle and each one would just volcano I out. Same thing happened to me once before. Yes, and it was, and it tasted just like rancid yeast in there. I took it back to the beer store and they refunded me, but I'm just like, as that brewery, I'm like, come on. Yeah, you know? I, I just, I took it with a grain of salt and yeah. was like, you know what, I, I know not to get that again. But yeah, I want a beer that, that you know, the, the smell is great and the taste is greater. You know, yeah. just something yeah. you, just yeah, something the aroma is like, the, the aroma is the first thing you look for I mean you know right. I, I want it to smell nice and be appetizing to what I want there's a lot of beers that taste good but smell bad and you you know you kind of that turns off the whole beer even though it still tastes okay but you're getting kind of a, an off flavor yeah. or off smell on the aroma and it just changes the whole beer so it's got to be really well balanced and you know just nicely I like full flavored you know, high octane, you know, a lot of times that's the way we kind of write our recipes, but, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I agree with pretty much everything that they said. Yeah, I don't like beers that get cheapened up. I mean, <clears throat> you come out with a good beer and then you mass produce it, you start cutting corners yeah, on Yeah, that's one thing we won't do is take shortcuts yeah. in our recipes. I mean, even if it it's a little more expensive for us to make, we're still going to put up that high-quality, all-natural ingredients, everything, you know, right the way it should be. Yeah, if, even if the profit margin is lower than, say, some of your other beers, but people are sitting in, sitting in here drinking it and ordering it, and raving about it. Why? Right. Why change it? I mean, yeah. I, yeah. on the average, I pay. I buy the good beers. I mean, mm -hmm. I pay twelve to fourteen dollars a six pack. Yeah. I have no yeah. problem with it because right. we work hard every day, and I get to decide how I want to spend my hard-earned money, and that's how I want to spend it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, I probably think I know the answer to this. So, since it's mostly a beer fest, have you have, you have never judged a, a Mr. No, Falls I beer? No, no. I've never had it. Okay. Um, and I will go on record saying you guys once let me taste it was, at the time it was I think considered a homebrew yeah. of, what, of what you will have yeah. at Missing Falls, but the stout, yes, one of the best stouts I've ever. I'm, I'm still saying that I still tell people that today. One of the best stouts I've ever had is Thank the Missing you. Falls stout. It was Thank phenomenal. You. It was phenomenal. I'm telling you. Uh, do you remember which one that was, or what it? That it was, was the like, Brutus. Okay. Yeah, that was our uh, oatmeal chocolate peanut butter stand. It'll be a, like a once a year, I think. You told uh, me I, I, well, my guess is it'll be like a, every couple months we'll have it out. It's yeah. not going to be all okay. every day. Yeah. But we we're not going to do it yearly because it's it's it'll be a pretty popular. We think it'll be a pretty popular yeah, beer. We, we got a lot of other beers on the back burner, which we want to bring up for. We would alternate it in for sure. Yeah, so many we want to rotate through some. I'm sure we'll have two or three out of the ten on draft staples, but everything else is going to be, you know, constantly changing, constantly coming up with good stuff. And, you know, just throwing it against the wall, see what sticks and see what the, see what the public Yeah, I mean, wants. my guess would be like half our beers will be staples, you know, the ones we know we'll, right. we'll, that we have set and are locked in. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, we'll definitely have a lot of uh, things to make people come back and try some more. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so when you go, Alex, when you like, so as a like pretty uh, heavy background in beer, when you go to a brew pub now and you do an install, or when you like, you probably like any of us, you're excited to see like a new spot opening yeah, up yeah. or a new brew pub. Like, what do you look for? Do you look at their their beer lineup and like kind of like establish? Like, oh, that's like exciting to see that in their like lineup i look for uh beers that are hard to hide in the states and so mm -hmm. like light lagers kolsch's light like a blonde something small light and little is what i usually start with and if people can get that down then they can probably make a pretty solid ipa and a really good stout yeah it's that's kind of where i start that's a good uh yeah it's like when you go to a pizza shop they right. say get like a cheese pizza. Right, yeah. Because if they can yeah. do that well, then it, right. most of their pizza is going to be good. Yeah. Alex, you definitely going to have to try our half of ice. And... I can't have wheat. I'm oh. like super allergic to wheat. Oh, uh, no. So you're definitely half not going to be able to try our half of ice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll lie and say it's a gluten free half of ice. You're just going to have to try it. Okay. Just going to have okay. to give it a warning. Angry text. <laughs> just, just power through it. Pictures. Power through it. <laughs> Bring an EpiPen, have yeah. a beer. People so, have lied to me in the past and I've taken pictures of it. So that's my revenge. <laughs> uh, to that, that same question, what kind of beers will you guys kind of focus on? Uh, I mean, kind of, you, we kind of talked about that a little bit in the last question, but as you guys brew and with, well, the, with those, what specific styles? And we have a few that we know are, are going to be our staples. We have, uh, you know, a couple IPAs that we feel are second to none in the area. Um, we have, uh, you know, we, we're very well rounded with the different styles of beer that we, we do make. You know, we have a lot of stouts and um, like you said, a Hefeweizen. We have our dark IPAs. Um, the, uh, like black IPAs? Yes. We have a couple nice. black IPAs. A couple. Nice. couple. Yeah. I love it. Uh, different no variants. No one does that style yeah. anymore, and it's like one it's, of my favorite styles. And ours is, is great. Yeah. I mean, I, I know. Um, it seemed like the only way to do that style for a while, if it was a black IPA, it was like super dark and astringent and like burnt. Crispy. See, ours is very well yeah, balanced, it's, and it's, it's super smooth. Well and balanced and, and real yeah. pronounced top. Yeah. yeah. Platform just released one, like a small A lot of them. It's really good. There are, there are a few good ones around, but um, you're right. A lot of times it's just kind of overpowered with the smokiness yeah. or the, the burnt flavoring, yeah. and, you know, we've found a, uh, our recipe does not. Some of the other offerings enough. we'll have is, like, our, our Irish shred. Mm -hmm. I don't want an Irish shred that you just get in March. You know, I want an Irish shred that's available seven, eight months of the year, and ours is amazing. Yeah. We've got a good Irish red. We've got some good Germans, the Hefeweizens, the Belgian strong ales. You know, it's just a lot of good stuff coming out. 
Yeah, and how like seasonal will it? I mean, because I know like when the craft beer, I don't know, wave one or two, I'd say like if you know they call it the, the different waves is like yeah. there was the Christmas sale craze, you know. I but, like, and that was so you know, so there, Mark's just, Mark said this many times, but there's so many good Christmas sales out there that they can make them. You know, yeah, right, we're right. not going to compete with I, with I, Great I, Lakes. I we're not going to compete with on the pumpkin bag with, with the, right, yeah, yeah, you know, twelve dogs. We're not going to compete with those. So it's yeah. why why you know. We might do something that kind of fits the season, but it's we're not going to call it a Christmas sale. Just try you know something I mean? different, like you know, there ain't too many Christmas IPAs out there, mm -hmm. are there? Mm -hmm. Right. So you know, just try something different. Absolutely. Plus, we think Brutus is probably good enough for that time of year anyway. Yeah. So oh, okay. it'll keep you warm. <laughs> um, so do you have like a? I don't know how this. This is something a question like that I wanted to throw in here personally, but like as you. So you're opening up a brew pub, like do you have a like your all-star lineup set for when you open, what you're gonna have on draft? Like I would imagine it's like, oh I can't wait for people to try these beers. Well we've we've got a tentative list here and this yeah. is just something we're tossing around, but we've got ten slots. And the more confident ones we're in and then the ones that need to be rotated just based on their very high alcohols or you know, their they're not going to be the most popular ones. We got a milk stout, an ESB, a brown ale. We got an IPA, a double IPA, an Irish red, a stout, a hefe, a Belgian golden strong ale, and last but not least, um, one of the thorns in my side, but it ended up turning out amazing, is a craft malt liquor. Really? Yes. Really? And um, I was out of town. It's amazing. Actually. I was out of town. And, <laughs> when my system was hijacked, I was out of town. And he had to leave town for us to do it, but we, yeah, we snuck into his, uh, his garage and brewed it up while he was gone because <laughs> he didn't want to be there, but um, it turned out great. Have you ever seen a mash tun full of corn? No. Well, it's, <laughs> it's a different sight. But uh, in, in their defense, it, it came out amazing in every You came back to that, the mash tun? But well, Whoa, they sent me photos. Okay, just okay. Because okay, okay. they're like, ha-ha, you're hundreds of miles away. Look what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because yeah. it gave the garage door code out once. <laughs> <laughs> but they um, they knocked it out of the park. Everybody that tried it loved it. Nice. It's some people's favorite beer that we make. I mean, it's, wow. it's, it's it shocked us, kind of, but it, it, it turned out really it's good. It's like a craft spin on a malt liquor. It's <laughs> not it's not your St. Ides out there. No. It, it's Only got a know. lot more body and a lot more flavor to it and hop notes. But, I mean, it falls in at 10% alcohol, so it's sure. it gets your attention. Sure. <laughs> wow, that sounds uh, sounds crazy. Are these, like, are, are you allowed to, like, you're releasing, is this the first time you've talked about what these beers are going to be like opening lineup like um well the, the, the certain people would be excited yeah. about that you know i, mean, I am. a ton of people have asked yeah. us just personally walk around or friends of ours or else and we'll just throw out the beers there a lot of people be like you know on facebook we got a good friend of ours he's always like you got to have brutus or you got to have that brutus. i would say that too so i'm imagining opening like there will be brutus there. yes <laughs> so Definitely, then everybody loves the Mango Rehab IPA. You were telling me about that one last time, yeah. Yeah, that's the Mango Habanero Infused IPA. Wow. And yeah. We really changed the Habanero bit because we're able to separate the capsaicin oil from the Habanero, and then we separate the pulp from the Habanero juice. And we just use the juice, not the pulp, and then sure, we sure. add the capsaicin to a heat level that we want, I, not the true heat level of a Habanero. Right. right. Yeah. It's more for it's a flavor than it yeah. is a heat, so that's what's great about it. Like. We have, I've tried many pepper beers and many mango beers, and I've, all, I've hated every single one, but I absolutely love this beer. Like, it's not just because it's ours, but it's, it's, uh, it's so good that it's, wow. I mean, I would drink it all the time. So. Right. Absolutely. And to do that with a, with a habanero beer is, is, is crazy. Yeah. It's always the first beer to go whenever we have it at, a, like, a, like, a home party. Yeah. It's the first one to, be, to go. With the name, we had to work the name because most people just called it mango habanero or mango hab. And it got to the point where a lot of people were like, hey, did you try the mango habanero? They're like, no, I, I don't like hot beer. So I had to lose the word habanero. Uh, so we decided just to call it mango rehab. Yeah. You know? And that way it's Smart. not saying yeah. habanero, but the, the hint of it's there. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's perfectly balanced. It's amazing. It's, yeah, it, it, it's a good one. Nice. That, I'm, that sounds, so that will probably be on the That lineup. will definitely be for opening night. And okay. hopefully it will be here for day two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get here. Get here early, because that will go. 
Yeah, we've, we've talked to other brewer friends of ours, and they had an IPA opening night, and the second night they were running a little Man. slim yeah. on it because right. it went fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so kind of switching gears. So there's like there, um, all these different crazy collaborations that I've been seeing lately. Yeah. It's like uh, Hi-Ho just did one with Pav's Ice Cream. There's like the rapper, uh, Ash, or what's his name? Uh, Action Bronson just did a collaboration <laughs> with Stillwater Beer, I think. I think it was Stillwater. Har- Harpoon uh, just signed up with Dunkin' Donuts. W- really? Yeah, Harpoon wow. and Dunkin' Donuts are doing a coffee porter. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I've seen everything from like, I mean, yeah, like the ice cream to different things. Do you guys like see, for see any like collaborations on your... Yeah. Uh, I mean, coffee's a natural one. Yeah, we've... we've with being the hot we drink. have we've a few got, things in the works that we really, I don't know that we can really get into because it's not really official. Yeah, but yeah. There's a there's a couple local Akron companies that we've talked to because we definitely want to stay in the area if we do that kind of stuff to promote other local businesses. Um, but yeah, I mean we we plan to do something, but it's we can't really get yeah. into that really right now until it's all worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, like a coffee one is interesting. Well, we have all, just... we've got three or four different coffee. Okay, beers, okay. So yeah, nice. we have a few coffee beers yeah, and yeah. you know um, there's something along the lines of the ice cream. Situation ah. that we might be working out with, okay, okay, with the local place, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, in, so in the we'll works. do something, yeah, it's in T- the works, TBD, so. right? <laughs> Until we get it all tested, it's kind of hard to we don't we don't really want to put it out there yet, yeah, yeah, absolutely, definitely, uh, something I'll be looking forward but to, but stay though. tuned because yes, you know, it, we'll, we'll announce it when we can, okay, but, okay, um, but it probably wouldn't be until we, we're open, obviously, but yeah. you know. We might do some testing in between, and we'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you guys, the, like, a little bit more on the space. So it's like we talk about like the third wave uh, of craft beer, and it's more so like the the craft or the brew pub more than like distribution. So it's like, yeah. hey, come check out this awesome space, this cool brew pub, and enjoy our amazing beer, rather than you know where can you get our beer? This or this grocery, you know, or this distribution or. Um, so tell us maybe a little bit about the uh, space and what you guys plan to do with your, your brew pub. I know you have the bay doors, it looks like. That's going to be pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, eventually next spring, they're redoing this whole parking lot out here. Mm. They're creating 750 parking spots. So parking nice. has always been an issue in Athens. Yes, yes. We don't have an issue. We won't have any problems with parking. Nice. That, that's going to be And huge. it'll be right outside our door, so yeah. people so won't have to walk to and get here. They're it's, redesigning these docks, so we're going to be able next spring to put a deck right outside those doors out mm-hmm. there. So mm-hmm. those will be open. We'll have a full patio deck out there. Uh, inside, we're going to have high and low tabletops around. Um, Room for about 125, yeah. 130 people. And as you can see, the bar is a 55-foot concrete finished bar. Mm. And it probably will sit. We haven't assembled all the chairs yet, but I'd take a coin flip on anywhere between 28 to 35, depending how tight you want to pack them. Okay, okay. Um, one of the corners over there we're thinking of doing is making it like kind of like the couch corner. We're in, uh, we've got some big TVs we're going to be mounting up this weekend and okay. be able to sit over there on some lounge chairs, couches, coffee table, throw rug. Be like kind of sitting down at your buddy's house, you know, yep. hanging out on the big couch. Down in the basement, you know, having drinks with your friends. Yeah. I like it. You know, maybe yeah. throw some bookcases up in the corner just mm-hmm. for aesthetic effects. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But we'll have TVs and stuff too, so we'll be able to watch sports and, sure. uh, you know, people to hang out and. Just have a good time, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A nice, you know, relaxed, happy atmosphere, pretty much. And we'll have food, so people can eat dinner. And you will have food. Yes, we will have yes, food. We will have food. Ah, what kind of uh, food? Uh, right now, we're working on that with the the chefs and the way the building's designed. Mm-hmm. Um, we're probably looking at um, sandwiches, wraps, panini presses, pizzas. Awesome. Um, charcuterie boards. Um, Who? Excuse me. Pre- charcuterie, meat and cheese strips. <laughs> Bless you. Meat and cheese strips. Well, we'll throw the English version out okay. there. Right. Um, well, we'll definitely have Sorry. some vegetarian and gluten-free options in yeah. there, too, yeah. uh, for people allergic to wheat. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I appreciate it. Right, not a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> but, yeah, we're, we're, we're Is that a new development? I feel like last time I talked to you guys, that wasn't We always had, all, the food was always, was always planned. Nice, okay, good. It's, it was just how to get it 
working. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're at the point now where everything's getting in line on the food, and the, the chefs we're working with are, they'll start out with a base menu, but as we're brewing beer, they're going to be taking our beer and seeing how to develop it into the food, mm-hmm. making sauces out of our That's beers, good. using our spent grain and Cheeses, doughs. you know, beer cheese mm-hmm. and yeah. things like this, so and pretzels. And it'll be, it'll spent be a grain work pizzas in progress. And It'll be a work in progress, sure, but sure. I mean, you'll be able to get something to eat on day one. I'm pretty sure of that. Okay. All right. Nice. I love it. I was at uh, Fatheads today. I had some uh, smoked wings and with, those with are uh, hot juju. Woo! Yeah. That was, that was a good lunch. Fatheads has always had some great food. Yeah. yeah the Big portions, too. That's, yep. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That's, you got to get to go when you're going there. <laughs> right. So I started to do this thing um, a couple episodes ago. And I just have named it the last call, which is five kind of random questions. Sometimes they're crazy, sometimes they're stupid, sometimes they actually make sense. So, yeah. um, and they're for everybody. So I'll start on your end, okay. Alex. Uh, so, do you have a favorite uh, beer style, and maybe like why? I know it's like that's like asking like a kid a spiritual, but um, I'm inclined to say it's whatever beer is in front of me. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, unless it's a wheat. Yeah, my my sort of like lawnmower beer go-to beer on a Saturday is uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. And yeah, that's sort of this. That's sort of the baseline, I think, for like excellent pale ale. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about, uh, what about you? What's Mark? Your, oh me? Yeah. Um, if I if I had a look up of all the beers sitting in the store and I was told just to pick one six pack. I'm going to have to go with Mystic Mama out of Jack Yo's. Okay. There's just something about that ever-changing beer. Now, over the years, it has kept changing and changing and changing, and it just keeps getting better. And mm. I, I'm lucky enough to have a drive through close to my house, and I always look at the date on the bottom of the can. I yeah. Get, yeah. I, sometimes I get that beer, and it's a week from canning. I'm like, this, this beer was canned last week. Now, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. You know, Absolutely. I, I won't even share it with my wife. I'll be honest. <laughs> up, pour me some. But if I had a go-to beer, that would have to be it. Uh, I mean, the IPA style's out there. Everyone's doing it. Uh, yeah. I do love a good porter, and I'm a sucker for the German beers. I really am. Mm, mm. Uh, I love a Hofbrauhaus, you know, all them styles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stephen. But if I had one to pick from, like I'm on a desert island and yeah. you get one six pack, it's going to be Mystic Mama. Okay, okay. Mr. Sean? Uh, you know, my, I go back to IPAs. You know, I like I like that punch in the mouth. I like the full flavor and knowing, you know, that it's just going to, you know, hit you when you drink it. I, I just like, I like that. Probably my favorite would be, you know, probably Bodie. I know it's more of a double, but yes. Bodie's nice. one of my favorite. Solid. Yeah. Hop Juju <laughs> is another one that yep. you, you know, yep. I, I just, I like it. Expensive ones. Yeah. You're right in the same boat with me. I mean, those would be too But I, I would guess lately I've been leaning more towards like some cultures and lagers. Or like you said, where you really can't hide a lot in those beers. And if they're done well, they're, they're, they're great. So yeah, it's kind of swinging back and forth. I've kind of started to come back the other way now just to, you know, just to kind of bring you know your taste buds back down, so you can enjoy more of the IPAs because you got to balance it out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and to that point, I would say like, for I always have a different answer for that question. I mean, look what you said, you know, and it's people are always like gonna go crazy about zombie du- zombie dust, three Floyds, but I would say Dreadnought over by three Floyds over. Zombie dust. Well, if you're going, Just, if you're going three Floyds, it'd be permanent funeral. It's probably yeah. my favorite beer by really? the Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's a near perfect beer, but they don't make it that much. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've heard. I never. Hmm. So okay, being the the hop and the bean, this may be kind of a more geeky question, but like, do you have a specific favorite hop? Do I have? A, um, yeah, I would probably be Motueka. Okay. So the few times that I've brewed with it, I've always loved beer that has. Mm-hmm. We have we have we have a beer with milk Yeah, I just uh, show off. Yeah. Hop and Frog used to make their goose juice. Yeah. And yeah. I used to like that one. Yeah, yeah. I remember they, that. they had early versions of Motueka that wasn't quite Motueka. It was like leading to it, and it was even like juicier and just a hell of a lot more citrusy. And that's that's what I love about. Huh. Yeah. Beer. Yeah. Motueka would be my go-to hop. And maybe, so for, like for our audience, that there's different people here, the hop and the bean, they're like, okay, a hop goes in, a, in beer, but yeah. the, maybe what they don't realize is there's tons of different variations of different, I mean, all different, it's an ingredient, right? Yeah. yeah. And so there's all different hops, right? And so that's, that's what we're talking about. Um, as we're a newer show, I try to 
help educate audience, uh, our audience that may not, you know, be totally in tune with. And I learn every time I talk like this way. I'm like in that percentage of people. I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't know that. So um, that's what we're talking about. What about you? Any specific? One topic? I've always really loved, and I've had some great beers within it. It is Chinook. Mm. I mean, it's mm. got an amazing pineiness to it, and depending how you use it, you can really get some dank out of it. But it also has a good spicy backbone in there, mm -hmm. which doesn't you know allow the pineiness to take over. It still has a little bit of earthiness to it. And I just, I've always loved that hop and beer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I, I, my initial thought was Chinook as well. Yeah. Oh, but it's, 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 it's kind of, <laughs> and that's more I think about it. It's like any hop that starts with the letter C. If that, you know, they're all that piney, you know, West Coast style hop that it just, yeah. that I really enjoy. So. Yeah, yeah. Any of the Cascade, Columbus, you know, Citra. Any of those, I, I really enjoy. Like the uh, brew kettle makes it with five C's. Is that yes. the, the like maybe yeah. for that something like that? I think. Can we make the yeah. seven C's? Yeah. Oh. Ter oh terror like of that. the seven C's. I did yeah. a double IPA called Terror of the Seven C's. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I also really like a lot of the older Goldings varieties that you yeah. kind of forget about where yeah. you can have a lot of really floral notes. Yeah. We do use Goldings in a few of ours as well. Yeah. So. Like Styrian yeah. Goldings. That's it's a really, good. really interesting hop. You don't yeah. taste it. I think it's our ESB yeah. that has oh, the Goldings in it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Same with the Belgian. Um, and so I'll go, go back to the, the collaboration. So, like, uh, I was looking for this question. I knew I wrote it down somewhere. And this is where it was. So, like, we talked about all these different crazy collaborations. Um, and this is more towards, like, the as we get weird with these questions. Like, if you could, like, think of, a, like, a crazy collaboration. So, like, I thought of, like... Uh, with LeBron leaving, it'd be cool to do like a, a Cleveland sour and call it like LeBron. Like something about like LeBron, because everybody's sour about LeBron leaving, like LeBron sour tears or something. I don't know. <laughs> what would be like a, um, like a, I don't know, a collaboration if you could pick anything to do, like a cartoon character or something? I don't know, it doesn't have to be that, but something oh, was just my question. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can start uh, with you if you. Um, an interesting collaboration. I, I would love to see a lot more north and south, like between Cleveland breweries and Akron breweries. Yeah. Because uh, they kind of went through the little the, the brewery explosion a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that there's, there's a lot that everyone can learn from each other. Um, yeah. Also, I think there's a lot of really interesting beers that can come out of that. Absolutely. That's a good, that's a good answer. I'll go next, actually, because I was thinking the other way, going down to Columbus, because they seem to be even further ahead with sure. the amount that and the brew path that they set up, like right before Rust and... I think they're a little bit further ahead than Cleveland. I know, yes, there are some established ones in Cleveland that have been, you know, moving along, but Columbus has just exploded. So there's a couple down there that I really enjoy, like, uh, what is it, Wolf's Ridge. Mm -hmm. um, it is, it's great. I'd love to do something with them someday. You know? mm -hmm. uh, so, what I think it's Seven Sun, Seven Sun is down yeah. there. They're yes. really good. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, those guys for sure. Okay. For me, North High, yeah, North High is really good. One. For me, I'd like to see all all the brewers in Summit County get all together. together. Yeah, mm -hmm. every brew house here in Summit County. All Do a three three zero beer, three three zero to go beer. Yes. Yes. beer. There you go. Yes, one uh, super. We could do a three three zero to go beer. Come out with one super we beer. We want to brew with you guys. Yes. Three three zero like IPA or some just one super beer. We all sit down and we make just you, you pretty idea. much make the one twenty of Akron. Yeah. Beer. Yes. That's a phenomenal beer. That's so, what I'd like to see. Yeah. I mean, we have breweries we that all watch the show. Other. We all get, everybody gets along. Yeah. You might have just started something. You might be on something. I, I think right that would be live. a great <laughs> idea, and I think it would benefit every brew house to have Absolutely. one common right. idea. If you get your name on the that The West beer. Coast has an IPA. The East Coast has an IPA. Yep. Let, let's just get a, a Summit County IPA. Let's do it. Brewers, if you're listening. You heard it here first. Let's get together at the next. Uh, you guys have a like brewery. Well, I own royalties on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Docking it out. Hey, well, we're, yeah, well, we're three three to go. We're gonna name it three three to go, and we'll take a little bit. I like it. Hey, well, well <laughs> no, but I think that'd be great for uh, like every brewer in some kind of get together and just come out with something massive, and some yeah. go for it. Yeah, I love that. Um, it could be for charity too. Yeah. What, um, do you, so next question, do you remember the first beer that you ever had? And then, uh, also, do you remember like the first beer that got you into craft beer? I mean, there's, 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 there's probably two different beers. Yeah, uh, my grandfather gave me a Budweiser when I was about six or seven years old. Um, and 
what got me into craft beer was probably Guinness, mm. if I'm honest. Yeah, okay. Um, Akron used to be a different place, and yep. you used to not have to have an ID when you went out. So <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> what do you like what? 16 and 17. The rule was, like, if you, were, if you didn't act a fool and you tipped well, nobody cared. Yeah. <laughs> sure. like, the only beers that we could stomach is, uh, like, younger kids with Guinness, so we would just drink gallons of it. Yeah. I can't, I can't have any of it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? For, for me, I'm for probably going to show my age here, but I remember being young and opening up a, a, an old rip-top thumb cutter of beer. And I think it was either Milwaukee's Beast or Schlitz, the old man used oh, to drink. Oh, yeah. And I'd the open it up for that. him. And, and, of course, being a little kid, you're going to shake that thing up as you open. So any <laughs> foam any yeah. that blew over, we were allowed to get down there and just clean that thing off. <laughs> <laughs> it to the so uh, probably five, six years old, I had a couple sips of beer. Yeah. And what got me into craft beer, when I was in the Navy, um, I was, I was a Bud Light drinker, I, I was a Budweiser drinker. I, I just thought that is what beer was. Sure. I had no clue. Sure. I was up in um, S- where was it? San Francisco, we were, we were there for a bit, and one of my good friends on the ship uh, was like, I'm gonna get the next round of beers. And he comes over with these darker beers, and I take a sip, and I'm, I almost spit it out. I'm like, dude, there's something wrong with this beer. What is it? He's like, it's Anchor Steam. This is beer. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Oh, this is terrible. But then as the night went on, I had a few more. I'm like, you know, by that, by the end of the night, I'm hugging everyone. This is great. <laughs> so I think that was probably my first craft beer was Anchor Steam. Okay. Okay. Um, I think my first beer was probably uh, Jenny Cream Ale. That my, oh, yeah. my, it was my dad's favorite beer for some, some in reason. In the green <laughs> can. In the green yeah. can. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It was an older, you know, it, it, it was definitely his style, but... Um, I think what got me to, you know, the first craft beer was probably like the Belgians, like Korsendonk, uh, mm-hmm. Lef, I'm trying to think, uh, Chimay was another one that had early on that I really enjoyed. But, you know, I remember like you were saying, like the first time I had an IPA, I, I was disgusted. I'm like, right. what? <laughs> right. what is all this bitterness? Like it's yeah, way yeah, too yeah. bitter and I, I, I can't yes. drink this. And now that's what I look for in a beer. So it's like, you know, yeah. it's, it's kind of funny how things evolve over time you know? absolutely how it like kind of develops yeah mm-hmm. absolutely. i mean i started out drinking like uh darker beers when i was like the darker the better like stouts like hop and frog really got me like yeah. excited about all their stouts and then slowly i branched out into ipas i think like my first beer my dad used to uh work for tremonti's uh, as a driver and I, I think i stole like five red dogs out of the basement. Oh, red dog. yes. <laughs> oh, red I remember dog. red dog. <laughs> yeah. If my parents are watching, they From know the, that the I plank, stole. The Plank Road Brewery? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, you have cases and I'm like, and it was like a red bulldog. So I'm like, yeah, let's drink yeah. these red dogs. And then I think the first, oh, no. uh, what was it? Killian's and uh, Honey Brown was another one. Early my mom on. drank Honey Brown. So that's another one I had early on. They like, were so sweet. Different. Yeah. Um, but the craft beer that got me, I think uh, Holy Moses, Back, uh, yes, I was like, likes. man, this is yeah. I was just like, that was this a is nice one. good, and it's not. But Weiser, what is this? You know, that so. went away. Dortmund was always a good one. Back. I was really upset. Yeah, yes. yeah, um, yeah. So, last question, which is, um, I have kind of a weird answer for this, but the weirdest place that you've ever, the weirdest place, or can be person, if you can't think of a place, but the weirdest place or person that you ever drank a beer with or at. So for, you, you think, yeah. for me, and if any of my friends from college are watching, we, I watched, or I drank, uh, we had to drink in this place called Inner, I don't know if I can say it actually, but it's, it was in a, a cellar in a basement, it had a wooden door, and the, as freshmen, they would lock us in this, do- in this room and just put a case of beer and say, drink it. So it was a pitch dark <laughs> cellar room with a case of beer, and it was just like a weird experience. Uh, and I was like, that's probably the weirdest, with like eight dudes <laughs> like in college. But like, here's a, another thing that might sound weird. But as I was like going to bed a couple nights ago, I was like, it was really dark. And I was like drinking a, a beer, like a really good beer. Uh, I forget what it was. But in the dark, I'm like, this is a kind of cool experience. Like drinking a beer. I'm totally focused on what this beer tastes like in the pitch dark. I don't know. A random rabbit trail. What's what's so? Uh, <laughs> what's the? All right. Well, like I said, like I said, like I said before, I was in the Navy, so I, I've had beers all over this world. Yeah, yeah. Probably one of the oddest places, and I do have a photo of this that I had a beer, and it's kind of a shady photo. Uh oh. 
I was sitting behind the bar, and we were in Bahrain in the United Arab Emirates. It was just outside of the Persian Gulf, and yeah. it's one of the uh, Muslim-occupied so islands that alcohol. is allowed to have alcohol. So I am literally behind the bar, me and a couple of buddies, and we got our, like, sitting in between us is like me, like a sheik, and then a buddy and a sheik, and <laughs> they're in the full turbans and all that. We got our arms around them, and we're firing down Heineken's, and for all I know, that could have been the Taliban at that time. <laughs> I had no clue, because there was no such thing back in 1991 sure. Sure. as the Taliban. But I, I, they didn't speak English, we didn't speak Arabic, but we all drank beer, and Universal we language. got trashed. <laughs> so you, you have this picture? Yes, I still have this picture. Are you going to, like... You should like frame I, it, put it in the. I could put it up here somewhere, not a problem. But I, I <laughs> do, that sounds like, that'd be a phenomenal. I do picture have the picture. Frame. I mean, I've probably had a beer in about forty-seven different countries. <laughs> nice, that's awesome. That's cool. Sean, I think the weirdest guy I had Weird beer. beer with is him. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't have any wild stories like that. Really, nice, oh, nice. <laughs> I mean, you've never been I mean, in a car <laughs> drinking while the cops chasing you. You want to finish it before you throw it out? Dude, dude my mom's watching. I don't know. <laughs> you never do that. <laughs> never did any of that. Come on now. Uh, I've had beers like watching cows calve, and that's probably just the weirdest. Yeah. You're sitting, <laughs> sitting in getting shit. Like, shit up your all right, you got, you got me. I was you in the bar when all mine went down. <laughs> you, you got me. Well, I, I am going to a woolly pig farm brewery at the end of this month. I've read, read about, about them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm I've going seen there. Them, July 26th. We're doing a show there. Nice. Yeah, I was like, I need to go there, and we're gonna do a show there. They got a bro is it Woolly Pig Brewing down there? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. Oh, I'm pumped for it. That's yeah, gonna I be great. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. There's an actual animal that is a Woolly Pig. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now there's a brewery. There. Oh, all right, let's do it. So. And it's on the farm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, anything before we close out that you guys want people to know about Missing Falls? What to expect? Um, coming to come here and when you guys are you know what we're, we're four hard-working guys we got day jobs um, this is our investment we had to write our own business plan mm -hmm. we've got very minute family investment and the rest of this was begging the bank and we're responsible for making all this happen uh, our, our livelihoods are on the line so we're gonna put out the best quality product for everything that we can do and try to make this, you know, just one hell of a place. Uh, we would love to expand. Right now, this is as big as we could get, and it's going to take a little to develop out the patio. And as we get money, throw in some more fermenters. But we're not starting out too shabby. But I can tell you what: um, if we're willing to get up at six in the morning in the middle of January when it's negative four out in my garage, right. yeah. fire up a kerosene heater, suck fumes, and brew beer for the next six hours. Imagine what we're going to do here with this system. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, um, yeah, so it's kind of like um, bringing it all together from like behind, Alex behind the scenes a little bit at these new brew pubs popping up in, uh, in Akron and Canton, Barberton, and then to like someone actually doing it, hearing from uh, these guys, Missing Falls, it's... I mean, it's blowing up all around Akron. That's what the Hop of the Bean is all about. Capturing these stories, going around um, the 330 and beyond and seeing, hearing the story, because like we were talking about before, it's a different story. There's a different passion to, that drives it. That, um, it's, a, it's an industry built on passion. And uh, we're, we're just trying to capture it, the Hop of the Bean, um, as we go to these different establishments, meet different great people, and sometimes get really good haircuts. Shout out to Tom Covey who gave me my cut. Um, first time in a long time I like go out in public without a hat on, uh, and or like a lot of product in my hair. So Tom Covey, Ella Bell's really good barber. Go check him out. But anyway, this, just wanted to throw that in there. He's awesome. Not even like a, a sponsorship at all. Just good people. Um, but they do sponsor Free Throw to Go. Little Bell's. They're awesome. Um, but. Yeah, hop in the bean. We're just this is we we are like what we really want to do, and I think we talked about it too is like come back when you guys open, definitely, and right. capture like, your grand opening and do whatever we can to help you get the buzz going. We'd love to have your opening night. Yeah, that would be so awesome. And I mean, just to I mean, from the first time that I've been here, it's just so cool to see the transformation. I love the lights, um, and I'm even more excited about the beer. I mean, from the time that I had it, but. Um, and that's what it's all about. So capturing these different stories, different great people that you find are behind the brew pubs to the coffee shops and the coffee houses to roasting the beans and uh, brewing with the hops. 
uh, that's what the hop of the bean is all about. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight with Missing Falls Brewery. Uh, Brew Pub is uh, going to be opening soon. You heard all about it. Check them out on Facebook. Um, you guys have a website up yet? Or Coming soon. Coming, Coming soon. soon. Yeah. Okay. Missingfalls.com. Uh, Insta you're on uh, Instagram? We're on Instagram. Okay. We're on Twitter. Okay. We're and on Facebook. And if you are a, a, a brewery or you're thinking about becoming a, a brew pub, I'm sure they'd love to talk to you about that. And Alex could set you up with some, you know, all that, your tap system and, and knowledge. Do you have any? Uh... I have a Facebook page. Yes. Akron Beer Company. Okay. Um, right now we're kind of in, in the process of merging with another company out of Cleveland. And oh, nice. So we're going to have a much larger footprint, but still yeah. doing the same exact stuff, like the same super high quality. Um, just, yeah. You can find me on Instagram, AS Pets. Cool. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I'm happy to be so much. Awesome to have you. Uh, until next time, I'm Buzz Andrews, and I'm all hopped up. <laughs>